Hey explorers, ready for another deep dive. Today we're heading to Ireland, to a place called Ballymoon Castle. You guys sent this one in, and yeah, it's not your typical romantic ruin. So get ready to uncover why this place is so special. You hit the nail on the head there, Ballymoon. It's, well, it's a bit of a head scratcher, architecturally speaking, that is. A head scratcher, huh? What makes it stand out from, you know, your average castle ruin? It's like someone took a bunch of different castle styles, threw them in a blender, and out popped Ballymoon. We're talking a real mix of, like, Gothic and Romanesque all in one place. Okay, now I'm picturing that blender, and it's making a very confused castle smoothie. So what's the story there? Was that a normal thing back then to just mix and match styles like that? That's the thing. It really wasn't. See, when you look at the timeline of castle architecture, those pointy arches and that sort of reaching for the sky vibe you get with Gothic, that usually came later. But at Bally Moon, you've got those elements right alongside the rounded arches and solidness of the Romanesque style, which was earlier. So it's like finding a self-driving car parked in ancient Rome. Like, how did that get there? Does that mean we've got the timeline of castle building all wrong? Well, it definitely throws a wrench in things. It suggests there might be more to the story than we know. Like, mm. were these builders experimenting? Was there some local tradition or influence we don't know about? Maybe they were trying to make a startment by combining those styles. It's a mystery that's got historians and architects stumped. Now, that's what I call intriguing. It's like this silent puzzle just sitting there daring us to figure it out. And get this to make things even more interesting. Bally Moon is located in County Carlow, which seems to be a hot spot for these really interesting uh, castles. Speaking of, there was another one you mentioned, Huntington Castle. Now, this one, if I remember correctly, is less about architectural head scratchers and more about being totally steeped in local legends, right? Huntington Castle, oh, now that's a whole other story. If Bally Moon is the silent puzzle, Huntington is the one whispering secrets on the wind. Okay, now you've got my attention. Whispering secrets. Laid on me. What kind of legends are we talking about here? It's a place with a certain atmosphere. It's been tied to stories of the supernatural, whispers about former residents who might not have fully departed, even rumors about connections to, shall we say, mystical societies. Mystical societies, you say. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a rabbit hole I am 100% here for. <laughs> this is why I love these deep dives. We start with a castle, and suddenly we're talking secret societies and, and maybe a ghost or two. Never a dull moment. And that's the beauty of County Carlo. It's a place where, well, history has a way of sticking around. You've got these castles, each one a sort of window into a different side of Ireland's past. Bally Moon with its architectural mysteries, Huntington and its whispered legends. Together they kind of paint a picture of a region that's both grand and, well, maybe a little bit spooky. Yeah, definitely getting that vibe. It just goes to show history isn't all about dates and battles, is it? It's about the stories that get woven into the very fabric of a place. You know, you're right. It's like we're trying to read between the lines of history, whether it's figuring out what those Bally Moon builders were going for or listening to the echoes of, well, maybe some not-so-friendly ghosts at Huntington. It makes you wonder if those whispers and rumors, maybe they tell us just as much about a place as any old book or document, you know? Speaking of places with stories to tell, this newsletter also mentions the Dingle Peninsula. Now, it might not have a Bally Moon or a Huntington, but it's got something just as captivating. It's that raw, untamed kind of beauty, the kind that inspires legends and traditions. Oh, absolutely. And just like Bally Moon's architecture gives us these little hints about the people who built it, the landscape of the Dingle Peninsula, well, it's been shaping the lives of the people who live there for centuries, you know. It's like that landscape itself is a storyteller. Precisely. This newsletter, it mentions these ancient stone forts that are practically clinging to the cliffs, and then you have these traditional fishing villages tucked away in these little hidden coves. It's like stepping back in time, but with, you know, way better views. Haha, uh -huh. yeah. I take yeah. a stunning coastal view over, well, pretty much anything. And speaking of views, there's this picture here of a pub, Thomas Connolly's, that was named Traditional Pub of the Year. Ah! Ah, Thomas Connolly's. Now that's a fine establishment. I and mean, get this, it's all the way over in Sligo, which is, well, about as far as you can get from the Dingle Peninsula without, you know, falling into the ocean. So what does that say about pub culture in Ireland? Is it like a universal language over there? You could say that. You know, no matter where you go in Ireland, you're never too far from a warm welcome, a good pint, and maybe even a bit of traditional music. But on a serious note, that award that Thomas Connolly's won, it really speaks to a certain consistency. It's like, just like Bally Moon, with its unique design, but still 
undeniably a castle. Thomas Connolly's probably has that classic Irish pub feel. Yeah. You know, those cozy interiors, the friendly locals, maybe a crackling fire going. It's all part of the experience. So it's like this thread of tradition that connects it all. The castles, the pubs, the landscape. Yeah. It all kind of comes together, doesn't it? Exactly. Uh -huh. It's what makes a trip to Ireland feel like stepping into, I don't know, maybe a storybook, whether you're exploring ancient ruins or hiking along the coast or just enjoying a pint by the fire. There's this feeling of history, of legend, woven into everything. It's almost like that line between, you know, reality and myth. It gets a little blurry sometimes. And, you know, maybe that's part of the magic of it all. Speaking of magic, there's one more thing in these notes that caught my eye. This newsletter, it lists these, quote unquote, top experiences in Ireland likely to sell out in 2024. Now, I don't have the actual list right in front of me, but thinking about everything we've learned today, what do you think might be on it? What would you bet on? Ooh, that's a good one. Hmm. Well, I mean, we have to assume a castle tour would be up there, right? Maybe one that includes Bally Moon. And after that whole pub conversation, I'm going to go out on a limb and say a traditional music session at a place like Thomas Connolly's is a pretty safe bet. Those always seem popular. I'd say you're on the right track with those. And wouldn't be surprised if a guided hike along the Dingle Peninsula made the cut, too. You know, experience that mix of history, culture, stunning scenery. It's kind of what Ireland does best. You're probably right. So many good options. But out of everything we've talked about today, if you had to pick just one experience for someone who's never been to Ireland before, what would it be? What's that one thing that really captures, you know, the essence of Ireland? Oh, that's a tough one. Ireland has so many incredible experiences. But if I had to choose just one. Just one to really get that taste of Ireland. I'd send them on a pilgrimage. A <laughs> pilgrimage to a traditional music session in a, you know, a real authentic rural pub. Ooh, now that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's not just about the music itself, is it? It's the whole vibe, the people, the atmosphere. Exactly. Imagine you walk into this pub, might be a little dimly lit. You smell that peat smoke in the air, maybe something delicious cooking. There's a fire going in the hearth. And over in the corner, there's a group of musicians, fiddles, flutes, bodrons, all ready to go. And then they start playing. And you're just like transported. It's like stepping right into the heart and soul of Ireland, you know. And these sessions, they're not just performances. They're more like conversations, melodies going back and forth, stories woven into the music, generations connecting through these tunes that have been passed down. It's that living history we keep talking about. But instead of like stone castles or landscapes, it's the music that's telling the story. Precisely. And, you know, the Dingle Peninsula, which we were talking about earlier, it's actually known for its traditional music scene. It all connects. That's right. This newsletter mentions that music is like woven into the fabric of life over there. After a day of exploring those cliffs and those stone forts, you end up in a pub listening to music that's been played for centuries. Talk about magic. And that sense of magic, of connecting with something ancient and powerful, it's what makes a place like Valley Moon Castle so fascinating too, isn't it? A reminder that there's always more beneath the surface, more stories waiting to be discovered. It's like that saying, in Ireland, there's no such thing as a stranger, only a friend you haven't met yet. Maybe there's no such thing as a ruin either, just a story waiting to be told. Beautifully said. Couldn't agree more. Well, everyone, there you have it. Another deep dive in the books. And this one has me mitching to book a flight to Ireland. We've explored the architectural mysteries of Ballymoon Castle, wandered through the legendary landscapes of County Carlow, felt the wild beauty of the Dingle Peninsula, and even raised a glass to the enduring spirit of Irish pubs. It's been quite a journey. It truly has. And I hope it's inspired all of you listening to go out and discover your own connections to this amazing country. It's history, it's culture, it's natural beauty. There's... Just so much to experience. Couldn't have said it better myself. So until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and who knows, maybe we'll see you in an Irish pub someday, soaking it all in.